Hey guys, John here from SurfFX and we're having a look at the Sonova Pilot. Now this board is the prone top end foiling board from Sonova. Uh, it was designed by Marcus Tardrew and James Casey who's name is on it. Uh, it's really the, they've been foiling quite a while. They're both top, top end foilers and they really managed to put together a very, you know, they've had a lot of experience with it. So they put together a very top end board with this. So a few changes I've done from previous models. This board is noticeably a touch narrower than the previous model. So reason being just to cut down on kind of board mass and, and, and just, you know, make it smaller through the air. Um, they've learned a lot you know, just going foil sh on board shape and what works well, you know, basically we talk, look at this from the top down. So let's look at the deck. So start off, you can see you got inserts. If you want to put foot straps, you know, this is a board that you can get and also use as a kite foil board uh, or as a tow board. It's in the TR3 construction, which is a nice environmentally, you know, sourced timber, which is the Polonia. Uh, makes it super, super tough. So it's great impact resistance. So you're not going to be as subject to like big dents and dings and things like that. Slight concave to the deck. Um, almost a little bit more skateboardy feel. Uh, lets you have a good bit of grip, you know, from your heel to toe and just helps you keep from sliding around. So we can see one we've got here with gripped up. Most guys will put a soft grip on it in the front. And it just gives you a nice kind of perch to kind of get your foot into uh, to, to get some good, uh, good traction, especially when you're pumping or if you're towing and you got your foot straps. The board itself, you know, that, that concave is, uh, is quite flat through the middle. Like it's, it's still dish, but the rocker of the deck is quite flat. So you're not dealing with, uh, you know, you're not standing high or anything like that. It's, it keeps everything quite level and trim. The concave itself is not so aggressive that it just pools up. So it's just, it's fairly shallow, but definitely enough to, to feel when you're standing on it. And it's almost got like a, you know, continues on through the back. So a little bit of a drain, but it's not really deep enough to kind of hold, hold a pool of water. Uh, nose on these, they flatten the rocker off a bit compared to the last one. They wanted it a little bit to, uh, to less push when you have to go under, like when you have to duck dive. So if it's a little bit more nose rocker, that you know, catches more water, obviously. Um, but that's with the deck area. But if you look at the bottom, that's all thinned out through the front. So you still have a lot of nose rocker on the bottom layer to uh, to give you clearance when you're, you know, taking off coming down the face um, just before you pop up. Through the middle, you've got a very flat rocker section right through the box area. Again, trying to keep that, the location of the foil nicely parallel with the deck of the board. So you don't have your front foot too high or back foot too high, you've got nice and even, so you're nice and stable so you can pump and turn. Bottom of the board, they've gone through a, you know, a, a bit of a chined rail that almost makes it, it's a bit concave. So you really have a concave, quad concave bottom and that gives you a sharp ridge to the center. So it's all about channeling the water when you paddle and about not catching when you touch down. So having that thick rail really helps it from kind of biting if you accidentally touch down on one side, you want it to be smooth and round and not grab hold on the sharp edge. And having that water channel flow through the middle. And then right about here, just before the logo, that uh, the whole concave setup kind of just it disappears to the middle and you got that real nice flat surface area for the fin boxes. So I don't know if you can see that there, but kind of from my hands here, uh, right to the back of the board is, uh, is dead flat. Coming through the back, they do have some cutaways. So a couple reasons they've done that. They actually want to reduce the tail volume a little bit. So when you are first on your feet, just as you're about to take off, uh, you don't have a lot of volume in the tail. So you can quickly push it down to sink it to pop up to, you know, after the chipping. And then you've got a little bit of a channel of uh, uh, bevel to the back edge, again, to kind of clear the tail and to get that, but also to have a little bit of it exposed. Uh, so you get that push from a little bit of white water. So you just want to maximize the, you know, paddle speed and ease of takeoff is really the whole thing they've done on this board. So the Casey boards, they are a, said, a touch narrower than somewhat some of the guys op offer. Uh, this 4.6, 33.9 liters. So decent volumes. 
they are a nice top end board, but that you really notice that kind of hardness and stiffness of this because it's uh, it, it's something that you really want to get rock solid. Otherwise, you're going to have flex and, and damage just by the amount of leverage you can put over this, especially being a bigger guy. You know, that's a, a lot of force you can put over a board if you don't have it stiff enough and made strong enough.